Designing buildings. What forms appeal to the eye? A jury from the German Architecture Museum has released a book listing buildings it considers pioneering. But what guided their choices? This furniture store looks like children's building blocks piled on top of each other. While the structure of this company headquarters is literally transparent. Both buildings made it into the latest edition of the German Architecture Yearbook. Only the best designs feature in the annual review. What do they have in common? Architecture critic Frederica Meyer was on the jury. There are many aspects to good architecture. It starts with urban planning. How does the building fit into its surroundings? Another aspect is how it's organized, how paths go through the building. This was the only building on which the entire jury agreed. They gave first prize to British architect Sir David Chipperfield's restoration of Berlin's new museum. The new museum was severely damaged in the war. David Chipperfield architects didn't simply restore the missing parts in the way they once were, they supplemented them with what would be built today. They interwove the old and the new with very artful seams. And so when you enter the building today, the rooms tell a story of their own. This year saw unprecedented consensus among the jury on its choices. At first, they debated this Berlin library, the Jakob and Wilhelm Grimm Institute. It was designed by Max Dudler, who clearly loves rectangles and straight lines. So you don't have to come up with creative chaos to make it into the yearbook. But the jury did also pick something absolutely the opposite, a new gallery construction by the architect Arno Brandlhuber in Berlin's Mitte district. It reflects the rough-hewn charm of Germany's capital, an unfinished, experimental building. Brandlhuber uses low-priced materials, a construction skeleton with industrial material for the facade, inexpensive living space for creative minds. Architects used to see themselves as creative artists with their own unique designs in the world. Today, external, social and political conditions and price are much more important. Architects have to develop a coherent solution that takes all this into account. Brandelhuber's building is an example of how people can remain flexible with new architecture. Each resident can add extensions at their own expense. Brandelhuber has moved into the building himself. The architecture yearbook presents the latest trends. That can also involve smaller projects, like this unconventional and low-priced freestanding home. 160 square meters for 220,000 euros, designed by a young duo of architects in Berlin. The facade is novel traditional ceramic roof tiles, but they're arranged in a less conventional way. It's a mixture of scales and pixels. Ultimately, it's about solving a problem, and we always initially try to answer it directly. But we aren't afraid of thinking outside the box either. What are the important criteria for good architecture today? There are many aspects. You can't answer that in one word. I would rather say that architecture and architects today work intensively with what is already present and develop it further. It's more a matter of building on what already exists than of simply building. And by today's standards, being considered a good architect means incorporating social aspects and a building's immediate surroundings. <laughs>